hey, just in case everybody isn't annoyed with us enough already, let's spend some more time talking about the Eastern Orthodox Church, courtesy of what? What? In 1054, there was a split between the Latin-speaking Church of the West and the Greek-speaking churches of the East. This split became known as the Great Schism, in which the Pope of Rome and the Patriarch of Constantinople excommunicated each other. To this day, the division remains between the Roman Catholic Church and the Eastern Orthodox Church. Like Roman Catholicism, the Eastern Orthodox claims to be the true Church, tracing its origin through an unbroken line of apostolic succession. They believe Jesus is the Son of God, that God is triune, and the Bible is His Word. However, they're still a Roman Catholic knockoff. The Orthodox Church denies justification by grace through faith alone, even though the Bible says there's no other way a person can be saved. Instead, the Orthodox Church says Christians receive salvation through a process of faith works and partaking in the sacraments. Perhaps you've studied Eastern Orthodoxy or spent some time talking to or visiting an Eastern Orthodox Church and you're saying, well, it's not quite that black and white. I get that sentiment. Nevertheless, I believe it is. Why? Because we have to cut through the clutter. There is a great deal of confusion about the Eastern Orthodox religion because of the way they think in a Western mindset. And I, I don't mean this pejoratively, but it typically takes them about seven or eight paragraphs to answer the question, how's the weather today? It tends to be a little bit confusing, but that is no excuse for those of us who stand on faith alone, grace alone, and Jesus Christ alone to say, well, then they're just another denomination of the Christian faith. We have to cut through the clutter and we have to make some calls. This is a life and death issue. People could be going to hell because they believe that justification involves sanctification. Now, undoubtedly, that is what the Eastern Orthodox Church teaches. They do not believe that Jesus' death on the cross was taking the wrath of the Father upon himself, that you and I might be forgiven. They do not believe in grace alone, faith alone, and Jesus alone. Yes, they believe in grace plus works. That means the person who thinks they can work their way to heaven in some way, shape, or form is in for a very eternal, rude awakening. Every reputable source that I read that would cut through it, that had some experience with the Eastern Orthodox Church, agrees with the well, what guy, specifically this particular set of commentaries on false world religions and cults. It's the answers in Genesis, guys. I'm telling you, these guys don't make mistakes. They are thorough with their research, and they agree. Eastern Orthodoxy, while somewhat complex and confusing, is still outside of small o orthodoxy, but there is more. Though the Orthodox Church teaches the Bible is the authoritative word of God, they believe the church is equal in authority and no one should interpret the Bible apart from church tradition. You say, what's the problem with that? Uh, because the Bible says it's the sufficient word of God. And if anybody adds to it, gulp, let them be anathema, but there is more. The Orthodox Church prays for the dead and says it's possible for salvation to occur after death. But the Bible says it is appointed for a man once to die and after that comes judgment. We have this life only to turn from sin and follow Christ. Furthermore, they will pray to Mary and to the saints. Furthermore, they believe they must partake of the sacraments in order to go to heaven. Did you catch those three little words? In order to. The Bible teaches that we take the Lord's Supper in memory of Jesus. We do it as a symbolic meal to remind ourselves, wow, what he did for us is amazing. Not so in Eastern Orthodoxy. They teach that you must participate in the seven sacraments, which are efficacious. They have power. They don't simply represent the bread the bread doesn't simply represent the body. The wine doesn't simply represent the blood. No, they do work. They actually forgive 
sins. Furthermore, they would say that the waters of baptism actually regenerate a baby, which is why they give pedo communion. They'll give communion to babies because they believe that they're as saved as anybody who is an adult who professes faith in Jesus Christ. Is the Eastern Orthodox Church difficult to understand? Oh, I grant you that. But we can't just go, well, you know, mate, it's, it's just we kind of give it a... If we love the truth, if we love God, and we love those people that are in that work righteous system, we will make some judgment calls and plead with them to repent and put their trust in Jesus Christ, Him alone, for total forgiveness of sins. Cue the MIDI, please. We are in the middle of our Rescue the Perishing campaign, inviting you to join us in seeking and saving that which is lost. Perhaps this hymn, Hark the Voice of Jesus Crying, perhaps points at you. Verse 3, if you cannot be a watchman, standing high on Zion's wall, pointing out the path to heaven, offering peace and life to all. Does that sound like you? You can't go. You maybe aren't ready yet to start witnessing one-on-one -on -one to people. What can you do to rescue the perishing? Um, with your prayers and with your bounties, that's old hymnal language for money. With your prayers and with your bounties, you can do what God demands. You can be like faithful Aaron, holding up the prophet's hands. Will you join us and help us rescue the perishing?